see it's Matt here from Mini War Footage. So this evening I'm just going to do um, some, make some movement trains. Um, when I first got into the into Oathmark, I um, wasn't sure if I was going to like it. Uh, I've said it before. Um, I didn't really do fantasy. I was a historical player, um, so I was investing some bits and pieces of money in it just to see if I liked it. Got the rules. Got some of the minis. Um, was I going to go and spend loads of money on movement trays? Da, da, da. No. So the answer was no. Um, and I was spending a lot of money on, uh, spent a bit of money on miniatures, and then I started spending a lot of money on miniatures, and I kind of forgot about the movement basis. So a quick interim thing that I was doing, and I think somebody else posted it up onto the Facebook page, was um, if you have a look at these guys. The, the movement, the the bases that turn up with the box set, obviously 25 mil. And funny enough, there's a little bit of gappage in there, a little bit of space in there, and they fit pretty much uh, two ranks and nearly to the correct frontage. So what I did is I took these and I started to clean them up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sit here and you're going to watch me clean these up. So these will go into fast, fast forward because everybody knows how to clean up. So basically all I'm doing is just taking off all the little bits here, taking off these bits here and yeah, that's it. And then I'm going to sand it uh, and you don't even necessarily need to watch me sanding. But, um, so I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I mean, it's up to you how much of this you take off. Um, it really is. If you want these to be completely flat, then you know, keep working at it. I'm using uh, these emery bases uh, boards, emery bases, and boards. I uh, got these from off of Amazon in a Gundan uh, kit, a cheap Chinese things. Um, I've put a link below. For Amazon, they are quite good. You get like a a scalpel, depending which you buy, and you get various bits and pieces. Depending on which one you you purchase, um, you get various bits and pieces of tools. Um, I find them quite handy. You get these things in them. Um, I mean, I my plastic clippers. I use the Tamiya ones because they are really good close ones. But they come in with these these things as well. Um, these are cheap and cheerful, ideal for hacking up bits of metal um, and bits of plastic. They're not, you know, they're you know they're adequate enough to get in uh, on your sprues. So yeah, it's up to you. you know, use what you want, but you know you can bring these down as much as you fancy. Um, so yeah. So once you've got to, to a point that you're happy, 
Next thing to do is get at your empty box. And Kat said empty box up. Now those, this is clearly already not big enough. So we'll try that again, shall we? Film stars. <laughs> So yeah, use this as a guide <laughs> to make sure you've got a bit of the card big enough. You can see here, you can probably get two of those out there. And so you can get easily get four out of here. Okay, so you can see here that actually it already comes flat on this side. So you can get that flat down onto there. Now it's up to you what you glue it down with. So as a as a I put it shiny down and then I'm gonna use some good old fashioned super glue. And I am going to whack that on there. Now I use this stuff. Okay, for my super glue. I use it all the time. I get it from Tool Station, it's like a three quid or something like this. This stuff is from Stool Station. Stool Station. Now this is also from Tool Station. I'll put a link down for it below uh, for both of these. I don't get anything kickbacks off this. Uh, it's ridiculously cheap. Uh, if you're buying any any super glue from anywhere else other than Tool Station, if you're in the UK uh, and you're not buying this stuff, you get two types. This one's like a pound a bottle, and there's the bigger bottle, which is like two pound fifty a bottle. It's cracking stuff. You get this stuff, which is about fiver. Um, it lasts for ages. You just spray it onto onto your whatever you have. Just put the super glue. You put it down, and what it does is it speeds up the bonding. And you just leave it for a bit pop some weight down on it doesn't matter what you're weighing it down with yeah it just it helps bring that in so basically then what we're doing is waiting and while you're waiting for that get your next one out start clipping that up I mean, this is great if you're not doing this somewhere where somebody they might get annoyed that there's plastic bits <laughs> firing literally everywhere. Uh, I ain't concerned because there's nobody to tell me off. And to be honest, this all goes onto the floor. And that is why I've got a Henry Hoover. Nice to get all this stuff up. And this is my painting room. So, yeah. And like I said, there's n literally nobody going to turn me off. And there you go. And you know, you keep going. It take to get these bases off. You got your next one. You're doing your next one. I mean, these are are, are only good for ten units of ten. But you know, you can put your five in there. Your five in there. When you bring it back. You can make up your twenties. So basically, you've got enough <laughs> movement trays for all your figures, uh, as in while well, you build build these these tr these guys up. Uh, so, so if you're buying the plastics, obviously, uh, and yeah, if you've had, you're getting some other things, uh, you can do that. Uh, if you've got the frost grave ones. Which, uh, as in a true Blue Peter style, here's one I didn't make earlier. They're slightly a little bit bigger, okay, uh, by a fraction. Um, but I don't think it's going to matter. Um, you know, I've got some movement trays, and they're 
you know, the frontage says that they're all I bought from several different places. And actually, the frontage is slightly different on all of them, um, on depending on who you're making them up. So you can still use these from Frostgrave as well if you're using the Frostgrave figures. Um, I haven't got any Atlantis. I haven't got any of the other ones. Um, so I don't know what basis they come with. Um, I haven't got any Fireforge because I don't haven't bought any of them. So you'd have to go and just check them out. You know, just if you've got the 25 mil bases from Oathmark and you want to, you know, you've got this. You can go to say, how big is it so compared to that? Anyway, moving on. So after a while, you know, that's going to be bonded down. So we've got super, that super glued down. That's pretty good. So first thing I do is then go back in and then I'm going to tighten up. this as close as I can now you are you might get the glue crack a little bit but we're gonna do some stuff so I'm not particularly worried about that because that will seal itself back up when we finish so just you know get it in as close as you can Okay. I mean, if you really want to, you know, you can get your shelf cool. This is not sharp, so I won't be using it. Uh, and come in and just clean that down. If you've got a really sharp scalpel, obviously you can just bring that edge in. Okay. So next thing is I texture it up. I don't know what you use for texturing. Um, I just use in some box standard PVA. We got PVA bond, uh, cheap ass stuff from Tool Station. Uh, something you know, you can use quick drying if you want. I've got quick drying. I've got contractors, uh, Everbuild uh, PVA. It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter what you want to use. Yeah. Bring this in. We're going to do this. Get that in. Make sure it's on the corners. There. So we've got that PVA. So that PVA is going to, when that PVA sets, it's going to obviously um, wrap this up a little bit and it might make it warp a bit of it. Um, I'm not particularly worried about that because super glue should, and this frame kind of keeps it straight okay so it's up to you what you do now i've got uh, my mixture of um, basing material so this is a mixture of corking i've got some stones in there from uh, various bits and pieces i've got bits of other stuff in there i've got some tiny little bits of cork in there that i've had left over I keep adding into it. The major base for this stuff, actually, is chintilla dust. Yep, that's right, chintilla dust. I don't use sand, I use chintilla dust. It's really fine. And it's ridiculously cheap. Um, something, I bought some about two years ago. And it's, I've still got stuff left. Uh, you can see here, I've need get packed do a little bit of patched up so I'm just gonna get that in there because I want to get make sure it's got a good coverage okay just push that in okay so it's kind of doing basically what you would with a base, really. Um, just making a really big base. Now you can get, you can worry about it not being on the sides. Da -da -da -da. So, yeah. And then we let it dry. Okay, guys. So. I let that dry overnight 
uh, you can see there. And what I did this morning is I've just got a normal or standard rattle can and sprayed up the base. Um, yeah, that's it really. Um, I use white because I've got an old can of white that's sitting around that was <laughs> I've just moved, so I found a few bits and pieces. So the next phase um, is just painting. Uh, get yourself a brown paint and just start getting some brown on there really. Um, I think too more complicated than this really. <laughs> Doesn't matter what brown you're using. I'm using Model Air Vallejo Burnt Umber and the reason I'm doing that is because my Model Air I don't particularly use anymore um, so that's what I'm using just mixing it up got like just some craft paint you know if you want to put that on here nothing wrong with that So yeah, as you can see, I've undercoated it. The uh, reason why I've undercoated it is because it makes a nice solid uh, block. If you try and use paint, uh, certainly acrylic paint or poster paint, I mean, you know, craft paint, should I say, poster paint, I don't think we use that anymore. Craft paint, what you'll find is it'll reactivate the PVA and the um, mix, uh, basing mix, uh, and you might end up smudging it around and losing some. That undercoat on there, it goes nice and solid. It's really stiff. Um, we're just going to let that dry overnight. Um, to be honest, you could probably touch that up in a few a few hours' time. But I'm just going to leave it overnight because uh, I like to make sure it's really dry. We're going to dry brush it up, add a few bits and pieces to it, uh, pick out some stones that are in there. And we've got a base, and uh, that's how easy it is. Uh, apart from drying time, I mean, it's, it's super quick. Um, if you take the video as it is, um, and the fact that I sprayed it this morning, it took approximately 30, 40 seconds, plus maybe a minute or two for shaking the can up. Uh, yeah, no time at all. All right, guys, we'll come back with the dry brushings ready. So guys, I finished this off. Uh, so this is the finished product. You can see from there. So all I've done uh, was once everything dried off uh, with, the, with the paint, I got my dry brush. Uh, I've gone over that, picked out the highlights. Um, I've got a another well, it's just a brush I've got to hand. And I've picked out some of the stones. I mean, you can go into much detail uh, as little as you want. Um, most of this time this is going to be covered over blue figures and you see I've stuck a couple of little tufts on there just to give it a bit of cover you know just to give it a bit more life and I've gone around the edges and given it a black edge on it so yeah I think it looks pretty cool um, obviously the next question is does it fit figures and as you can see in a true blue Peter fashion here's what I built earlier uh, the answer is yes. 
There you go, you've got 10 figures on the bets. Yeah. So, you know, as you remove casualties, looks like you've got some, oops, got some pieces there. So it's quite a handy little thing to do. I mean, and like I said, you know, you may not want to buy, go and buy all those things. And you, what you do know is that you've got three of these in a box. That's enough for um, three movement trays. I'm not trying to rob anybody of business because if you wanted circular ones, they will fit in there as nicely. You know, but it, it just looks nice, doesn't it? I mean, and it's cheap and, and quick to do. Um, I know I've left it overnight to dry twice, but in the scale of, you know, things, you can knock these out, you can do all three at once for each box, look dry, you're looking at minimum time just to be able to um, do this. You know, you're talking half an hour max with the paint on and whacking the glue on. It's just that initial drying time. Anyway, I hope that was useful. Um, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you later.